Hey guys, Brian here with another topic in physics. Uh, today we're taking a little step away from uh, the discussion we were having on light in the last two podcasts. We're actually looking at something that uh, we had been just kind of covering more of in examples. Uh, today we're going to be talking about electrons. Now, we discussed the, uh, the wave-particle duality of light. And when you think of a particle, that kind of, um, or well, an electron, I should say, when you think of an electron, you know, you have this classical definition of, well, yeah, it's a particle. It has all those properties we were talking about in the first podcast where it's a localized object, has a measurable charge, mass, uh, you know, you can, you know, just run with the list basically. And you can define it classically as a particle. But what we're going to be discussing in this is something that to this day still mystifies many physicists and comes up with some very interesting results. Something that has sparked a lot of debate and some pretty cool theories actually. And that is the wave-particle duality of electrons. Now, obviously, you know, as I said before, we have this classical definition of electron being a particle. But that kind of changed with this last century. We've been running experiments, doing all sorts of crazy cool stuff with anything and everything that we can find. And one of the things that we started doing was the two-slit experiment that we also did with waves. So if you look at a particle, imagine instead of having the waves going through your two slits and then having that diffraction pattern, instead of stepping away from the electrons for a second, imagine you had the two slits and you were just throwing baseballs at your target. The baseballs would, you know, someone would bounce off the target, hit the wall, and the ones that go through those little slits will hit in two parallel lines the, the same uh, as would be lined up, they would be lined up with the uh, the two slits, and they would be going through and hitting those two parallel lines on the wall. That's the type of behavior you expect from a particle. However, when we sent those electrons through the two slits, the pattern that we saw on our target wall, instead of having that, you know, two equal lines of, you know, electrons hitting the wall, we actually got the same diffraction pattern that you get when you shoot light through it, that monochromatic light. And obviously being a particle, this should never happen. And that kind of throws in this whole idea of the wave-particle duality. However, the experiment went on because they're sitting there thinking, all, all the scientists that were on this experiment, well, how can this be? Because we're shooting particles through two slits, they have to go through one or the other. How are they creating this interference pattern? And so what they did was they took a photo detector. It's just a, a simple little box that has detectors in it that can uh, detect um, electronic energy or light going through. And anything that gets radiated from the electron will be picked up by these detectors. And they put the detector on the back side of the slits. So let's say I'm here, your slits are right here, they'll have the particle detector right behind it. And then the target wall is my bedroom wall over there. When they put the detector there and they start shooting the electrons through, something intriguingly unexplainable happened. Instead of getting that wave diffraction pattern that they were getting before, they were now getting the particle pattern you expect on your target wall. Obviously that's not supposed to happen if you're already getting one pattern. So they ran it again. See if maybe, oh, there must be some interference or something. And they found out that they got the exact same result. So they took away that detector. Essentially they removed the observer. And when they ran the experiment again, they got the wave diffraction pattern. So the simple act of observing and measuring to detect which slit the electrons are going through is changing the experiment. And that's kind of a little offshoot of the saying that most people have in like sports and racing that you change the result by measuring it. And that exactly is what happens 
when you add the observer for this electron experiment, thus throwing in the cool idea of the wave-particle duality, not only for light, but for electrons as well. And now this opens up something that I actually read in a book called In Search of Schrodinger's Cat. Um, I actually have it right here by John Gribben. Excellent little book. It covers the entire history of quantum physics. It uh, talks a lot about the uh, scientists involved in all the discoveries. And one of the things that is mentioned is the possibility of what's called ghost realities, where essentially if you don't have that observer there, the electron has to choose which hole to go through. Now, we're not used to talking about just, you know, regular random objects being able to think, but it actually does choose a slit to go through. And until it reaches the slit and actually goes through it, you have the physical reality that we'll experience of which hole it goes through. And then you'll have that ghost reality of the other hole that it could have gone through. And this is a very complex idea because you can branch off of this and instead of just saying ghost realities, the moment you perform this experiment, you create two separate realities. And this is where you create kind of split timelines almost. Um, it's obviously something that has been very intriguing with uh, not only physicists, but anybody and everybody who's ever heard of this experiment. And something that is definitely being looked into further and further as time goes on. So that's just kind of something to step away from light for one of these podcasts. Get you guys thinking about something else. Some of the cool new theories that are coming out right now. Uh, in the next podcast, we'll be back on light and we'll be talking about redshift versus blue shift. And that will lead into our fifth and final podcast of the discovery of the expanding universe.